Hi everyone. So today's video is a long awaited video. It is my first ever Q&A. Now I have received a ton of questions. My inbox has been flooded. My YouTube comments have been flooded. Twitter has been flooded. So I am going to jump right into these questions, you guys. I'm going to be answering around 20 questions. And if I did not choose your question, I am sorry. There was just so many to choose from, but I will be doing more Q&As in the future. So stay on the lookout and let's get started. The first question comes from my best friend, Connor, AKA OK Fabe here on YouTube. He asks, if you were a women's wrestler, which brand would you prefer to wrestle on Raw or SmackDown as it stands right now? So this is a great question. I... Being as young as I am, I would actually prefer SmackDown because one, it's a thinner roster than Raw for the women's division, and two, kind of you get more opportunity. I mean, look at Alexa Bliss. I mean, Alexa Bliss is who I would kind of mirror myself to be if I was currently in the company. You know, we're the same age, and um, I would love to be on SmackDown, you know, like she's creating her brand currently and that's exactly what I would be doing. So I would definitely prefer to be on SmackDown. You have more opportunity there to shine. He has a part two. Connor's second question to me is, which male or female wrestler do you relate to the most? Not necessarily your favorite, but the one you see traits of yourself in. Um, this is a good question. I would have to say, even though she's not necessarily a wrestler, I would say Lana. And I follow Lana on all social media platforms. She's very big into being a strong female, being, you know, empowering other women. And that is who I am as a person, like in my day-to-day -day life. So I really relate to that. And she seems very loyal. And one of her best quotes that I love is um, no one is going to tell me who I can love. And I really love that because she stood up to Vince McMahon when he tried to break them up. So I love her. I think she's great and she's a strong female, even though she doesn't get enough credit. I really relate to her and I think she's great. So now I'm going to jump onto YouTube and answer questions. First question coming from Dory Hickey. Hey girl. If you could manage any superstar, past or present, who would you choose? Ooh, wow, that's a good one. Um, hmm. You know, I honestly, I would love to manage Seth Rollins because I could be his mouthpiece because he's not the best on the mic, I will admit. So I feel like I could be his, you know, right hand woman for the job. I think it would be fun. So I would love to manage Rollins. Yeah. Even though he doesn't necessarily need a manager, that's just who I would love to manage. And your second part of your question is also, what is your favorite entrance? My favorite entrance currently is Bobby Roode's theme. Oh my goodness. It is glorious. Let me tell you, if you watched NXT Brooklyn, that was incredibly lit. It truly was. So yeah, that's my favorite entrance. The next question comes from Timothy Nelson. What year did you start watching wrestling and what is your favorite year of wrestling and least favorite year? So uh, it's my story is kind of unique because I started watching wrestling with my family. Like we would all sit around the living room and watch when I was really, really young. So I first started watching full-time King of the Ring 1998 when Mick Foley, Mankind, got thrown off the cell by The Undertaker. That's when I was really fully intrigued and I had to, I was glued to the TV every Monday night I would watch with my family and um, that's when I watched full-time. Now, what is your first, uh, what is your favorite year of wrestling and least favorite year of wrestling? My favorite year of wrestling, hmm, you know what? I'm going to say recent because now I feel like the wrestling has been incredible as of late. So I would say this new era is honestly like becoming my favorite quickly um, with, you know, Zayn Nakamura, 
you've got um, AJ Styles, you got Rollins, you got Owens. So all these guys, they're putting on these great matches. So I would say as of now is my favorite. Um, uh, WWE uh, hasn't been any better than what it is currently in terms of wrestling. My least favorite year is 09. That's when I kind of fell off for a little while. I just think it was very stale. They were putting the belt on people who really, it was like, oh, what the fuck? Why would you put the belt on these people? For instance, in the beginning of 2010, they put the belt on Swagger. Really stupid move. Um, that's when I fell off. I hopped right back on the bandwagon, though, after the pipe bomb. So I owe CM Punk a big thank you. And honestly, if it wasn't for that pipe bomb, to be honest, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. So thank you, CM Punk. I love you. The next question comes from Sass Foot. Interesting name. What makes you hate Roman so much? I run the biggest anti reigns page on Facebook and would love to know. Okay, so I get this question a lot, actually. I personally do not hate anyone, but I dislike his character because I feel like he doesn't exude any originality. I feel like he has the same theme. Come on. The same effing theme music since he was in The Shield. Um, you know, his attire is still the same. I feel like he's a very bland character. I feel like overall he doesn't have much identity to him. His promos are very repetitive. And I don't know, I just feel like he was brought up way too quickly. And um, he was brought up in let's be honest, nepotism fashion. You know, being related to The Rock gets you places. It's just how it is. Nepotism has been around forever. It happens in every single job, no matter what you do. You could be working at McDonald's or you could be a sports entertainer. It doesn't matter. Nepotism gets people higher positions. And he was called up very quickly because of his relations with The Rock. So uh, I don't like him. I do not like him and I never will. So that's just my opinion. Next question comes from Beto Garcia. Do you think WWE should go back to TV 14 or do you prefer PG? Um, in a perfect world, as an adult, I would love them to go back to TV 14. You know, they could blur the lines a lot more. They could push the boundaries and it would kind of garner to us the adult wrestling fans. Um, the reason why they're sticking with PG, two words sponsors and endorsements. They want money. Um, you know, WWE is a business overall, you know, uh, yes, it is wrestling, but at the same time, it is a business. It's a money making business. So honestly, Vince only cares about the money. So to be honest with you guys, that is the only reason why they are so PG because they don't want to lose sponsors. If they blur the lines, push the boundaries, sponsors are going to get scared because they don't want to be affiliated with something that's, you know, kind of risque or whatever. So that is exactly why they kind of dumb themselves down. So sponsors will sign deals with them so they can make more money. It's all about money. So that's the only reason. Next question comes from Sean McVitie. Who, in your opinion, of all wrestlers that have been either released or have quit deserved a better run in WWE? Excellent question. I am going to keep this short and sweet. Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre. Cody Rhodes, because, uh, hello, look at his lineage. He should have easily been elevated to a main event spot. No clue why they slept on him. He had it all. He could talk on the mic. He had the look. Great in-ring talent. So I'll be forever left wondering why. Now, Drew McIntyre, another guy who, you know, unfortunately kind of came up on the short end of the stick with the company. Um, he was billed as the chosen one. He was hand signed by Vince McMahon at 23 years old. So obviously we all thought he was going to be something huge. He was a great in-ring talent, especially for that time period. And, um... He just was never utilized to the best of his ability, unfortunately. He was okay on the mic. I'm not saying he was anything great, but he could have developed over time. Um, I will say with any gimmick he was given, he tried to do the best he could. He just, you know, fell short, unfortunately. He married somebody, I believe, in 09, Taryn Terrell, I think her name was. And unfortunately, she was a little bit of a bitch backstage. A lot of a bitch. And um, 
Unfortunately, if anybody knows anything about McMahon, he kind of penalizes people who have um, kind of ruthless significant others, so to speak. So that's probably why McIntyre never got the push he deserved. Next question comes from the typical slug. Who was your favorite superstar as a kid? So I grew up watching Shawn Michaels, Mick Foley, Bret Hart, um, you know, the people from the Attitude Era. So I would say, because this was my first match ever, I would say Shawn Michaels for sure. Um, Mick Foley being a close second. The next question comes from Cole Bear. Who is your favorite wrestler of all time and why? Okay, so even though those people were my favorite as a kid, my favorite of all time has to go to the rated R superstar, Edge. I love Edge with a burning passion. Oh my goodness, I'm getting goosebumps now just talking about him. Okay, so when he retired, I was bawling my eyes out, bawling my eyes out. I have so many stories about Edge. Um, I remember sitting around the living room when Edge cashed in his Money in the Bank in 06. I was watching with all my friends and we were sitting around. We were screaming. I remember going into school the next day with an e rated R Superstar Edge shirt. I was, oh my God, it was so awesome. Um... He was just an, the epitome of an epic heel back in the day. And um, I loved him since, you know, being in the brood and then teaming with Christian. Um, Edge and Christian was epic. Epic tag team. Um, I loved his run as a single star with Lita being his ballet. That was so, 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 so good. His feud with Cena was al also one of my favorite feuds of all time. And... It's unfortunate that he had to retire as young as he did, but I'm just glad he's healthy and happy, and I'm glad he's still involved in the company in some way, shape, or form. Next question comes from Shotgun785. Should WWE be panicking about the Raw ratings now? Just last week, they got a 1.88 rating in a non-holiday Raw. Absolutely. They have to spice things up a bit. Um, I do think that it is, uh, it's football season, isn't it? I don't watch sports, but from what I see on Facebook, everybody's posting about uh, football shit. So um, I think Vince McMahon hates when it's football season because their ratings go down dramatically. So I think that's why. And I think it's because they need to, you know, keep the Raws non-boring. Last week was horrendous. So they just have to spice things up every hour to keep people intrigued to tune in and glue themselves to the TV instead of turning the channels off. Next question comes from Super Long One Two Three. Who do you want to see main event WrestleMania Thirty Three? Um, I don't have necessarily a match that I want to see yet. I just want to see either Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, um, AJ Styles, Rusev, guys like that. I hope one of those people main event because that would be epic. It would be lit. Be fantastic. Um, I just hope it's good because your girl probably is going. Next question comes from Nomad602. Who is your least favorite wrestler who is currently still wrestling? Um, obviously, I think you guys know it would be Roman, but to make this a little bit more fun and interesting, I'm going to name someone else. I actually have to go with Enzo Amore. Now, I know most of you fanboys are going to be talking shit in the comments about that, but honestly, yes, he's great on the mic, but what else can he do? Because his in-ring work, if you want to even call that, or lack thereof, is completely atrocious and very, very hard to watch. So, Enzo, stick to what is good for you and what's best for you, and that is mic work. Be a manager. Leave the in-ring stuff to the professionals. Mm -mm. Not sold on them, sorry. And hello, by the way, we follow each other on Twitter. This question comes from Kyle Wilson. Who do you see finally defeating Brock Lesnar? Hmm. If he gets called up within the next year, I see Shinsuke Nakamura defeating Brock Lesnar. Next question comes from Kalal Nixon. What is a dream match for Seth Rollins? My dream match for Seth Rollins is Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles in a two out of three falls match at WrestleMania. Now I'm going to hop onto Twitter and answer some questions on Twitter. If you're not following me, follow me at Elena Nicole. 
N-I-C, zero as in the number, zero, L-E. I am always on Twitter, so if, you know, if you want to stay updated, definitely follow me on Twitter. I will also be announcing this week the winner to Elena's Raw After Party, my podcast starting October 3rd. So definitely follow me on Twitter if you want to know who won. The winner has been chosen, and I will be contacting the winner just for confirmation purposes, and I will be announcing it within the next couple of days publicly. Okay, so the first person to tweet me, in which question I liked, Raunchy Mikey asks, would you ever like to see a Kevin Owens face turn? Um, honestly, I don't mind. I really don't. He's great either way, but I would personally love to see what he could do as a heel, especially as being a universal champion. I just want to see what he could do with this title run as a heel. You know, maybe a year from now, I wouldn't mind him seeing being a face because he's over either way. So he's great. So whatever they decide, I'm fine with. Next question comes from Moses Lizard. What match made you a wrestling fan? Okay, so I'm glad someone asked me this because I want to jump into this quickly. So the first match my dad made my whole family watch, it was um, WrestleMania 12. I was so, so, so young at this time. So I just remember sitting around watching it and I'm thinking to myself, why is this match so long? It was the Iron Man match. Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. So good. Um, I will admit, though, since being so young at that point, I kind of fell off. And two years later, I got into it hardcore full time, which I mentioned earlier in the video. It was uh, mankind being thrown off of the cell from The Undertaker. That is when I was hooked. Next question is from Matt James. Who do you think should win next year's Royal Rumble? Ooh, this is a good question. I think it's too early to tell, to be honest, though, because it is only mid-September. There's still four months left. Um, so they could push somebody and say November for two months, hardcore, and boom, they win. But as of now, realistically, who I think deserves it the most, I'm going to actually pick three people because it's so hard to tell who could actually win the Rumble right now. But who deserves it the most? Cesaro. He definitely needs this push. It could revive his career tenfold. Um, Rusev, another person who it would el help elevate their career incredibly. Um, and Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt had that great promo with The Rock at Mania last year. Well, this year. And um, he's a star, but he's not booked correctly. But those three guys are, right off the top of my head, deserve it the most, in my opinion. Um, who I think realistically they're going to choose... Uh, it's too early to tell. I guess maybe Balor, if he comes back, that's who I would think because unfortunately he got injured when they pushed him. So I think that they would redo it if he is a surprise entrance in the Rumble. He's going to win. Finn Balor is my pick. And the final question comes from Tyler Rizzo on Twitter. Who is your favorite past women's wrestler? Well, I did grow up watching China, so of course she's great. Um, rest in peace. But actually, when I started getting into it hardcore, I actually think this woman is very underrated. And she worked her ass off considering she didn't grow up a fan or anything. She was a model turned wrestler, Candice Michelle. And I know a lot of you people are probably shocked by that answer, considering I'm a diehard fan. But I have to give a lot of credit to somebody who never thought they'd be a wrestler and then won. Uh, well, she didn't win the Diva Search back in 04, but she, McMahon liked her. And um, she really focused on becoming a wrestler and got a lot better. Um, she did what Eva Marie couldn't, and that is improve. So I give Candace a lot of credit, and um, she was gorgeous, you know, stunning. I idolized her growing up. She's so beautiful, being dark hair, you know. Back then, like, she gave girls like me um, inspiration because it was all about blonde women back in the day, you know, the early 2000s. And seeing that she had dark hair, it just gave me a lot of hope and um, made me feel beautiful, you know. And um, now dark hair is super in, but back then it really wasn't. So 
I, I always looked up to her, you know, great wrestler for what it was back in the day. And she gave it her all. And I really, really love her. Till this day, I still love her. So, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed my Q&A. Please follow me on Twitter for constant updates. And I will be back very shortly with another video for you guys. Thank you guys so much.